my cheap little Strat Copy project guitar in the Mod Cave today, and that's because I want to show you two ways to do my favourite Strat wiring mod. So this is my Casino brand Strat Copy project guitar. I don't think Casino has anything to do with Epiphone Casino. I think it was just an Australian brand from one of the importers here. I could be wrong. It was very cheap. I bought this for 80 bucks, which is you know, about 60 US or 50 pounds. I just assumed, especially from the price that it was originally made in the early or mid 2000s in China, and it was kind of similar to one of those Fender Squires from that era. But honestly, there's no serial number. There's uh, very little information about these online. So I have no idea. And if you do know, uh, let me know in the comments. The guitar has some uh, pretty surprisingly nice features for such a budget instrument. The main one is the fretwork. It's more or less perfect. And to be honest, you know, the fret slots are no deeper than they need to be. The fret ends are all really beautifully and evenly beveled. And the fret wire itself seems to be a really high quality. And that's because clearly I think the instrument's been played quite a lot in its time, but there's really no fret wear. There's no scalloping or really any fret wear on the crowns at all. So um, yeah, it's really remarkable. I did tweak the setup, even though it did actually play pretty well. I got rid of the plastic shim that was under the neck put in a nice little piece of hardwood in there. I've got a video on how to do that, so check it out. I did replace a couple of the machine heads. Uh, they weren't really worn out. In fact, they all work just fine, but the end two had sustained just a little bit of damage, and I happen to have a couple in my junk box that were, well, they're not a perfect match, but they're very close, so they're in there now. I've also reshaped the headstock slightly. It uh, was, was pretty ugly, to be honest. It had this sort of beak on the end, and I really only removed just a small amount of timber and uh, rounded this end off. But I think it's kind of transformed the look of the headstock and the guitar in general, actually. I did something very similar in the Project Barocca series, so check that video out. I've also removed the headstock logo. Um, it was pretty obvious that it had just been printed or stenciled or silk screened or something on top of the poly. So it just rubbed off with acetone, so I got lucky there. But you can still actually see the logo because of just how UV affected the polys become over the years. The main mod though that I have done is this three-way rotary switch here. And uh, I'll put it on the bench and I'll show you what's happening. So the guitar's got the standard strap set up with three single coils and the middle coil, as you can see, has um, reverse magnetic polarity. My mod switch has three positions. It's a three position rotary switch. And when the switch is in the middle, in the middle, then the Strat works just as it should with its five way switch. So I've got the bridge pickup. And then I've got these two in parallel. Middle pickup. Middle and neck. And then neck pick up soloed. Now when you roll this switch back towards the bridge, it hardwires the middle and bridge pickup in series directly to my master volume and tone. By the way, I've gotten rid of the second tone pot. I never really use it with strats. I prefer master volume and tone anyway. Um, and when you roll this switch forward, You get these two pickups, the neck and the middle, hardwired in series to the volume and tone. Uh, you can kind of think of this three-way switch a little bit like the toggle switch on maybe a Les Paul where you have a, a, I guess, a neck humbucker and a bridge humbucker. And then in the middle you can just set your favourite Strat sound um, and just use this kind of like a three-way toggle switch, I guess. Obviously, two single coil strat pickups wide in series is never really going to sound like a Les Paul, but I think you, you get what I'm talking about. In fact, that's one of the things about switching strat pickups into series that I quite like is that, yeah, you get a fuller, fatter, sort of uh, slightly warmer sort of sound, but you don't really lose the strat brightness. Um, it still, still sounds like a strat to me anyway. Another way to use the switch is 
just kind of like a series parallel switch really. So if you have this in position two and we've got these two in parallel, this acts as a series switch. So you go from series to parallel and you can do the same thing in position four with the neck in the middle. series. So I think it's a really nice uh, option if you're perhaps the only guitar player in your band and you have to switch straight to lead uh, with one switch and you need that little volume boost um, and you need a, a more mid-rangey sound. It's great with drive pedals and, and drive sounds as well, uh, especially these two. I think it's really nice. The thing is though, the other day I plugged this guy in to do some recording and the five-way switch that's in it was, well, it was kind of playing up. It was a little bit scratchy. Some of the positions were a little bit intermittent. I hit it with some contact cleaner. It's behaving itself now, but I've decided to replace the switch and I've um, ended up buying something kind of high quality. This is an Oak Grigsby Strat switch. It wasn't really that much more expensive though to get a five throw Strat switch. So we all know that uh, a standard strat switch like this poor old crusty thing from my junk box, we all know that it has five positions of course, but a standard strat switch with eight lugs really only actually has three throws. So three uh, output terminals for the switch or input terminals, I guess, depending on which way you're wiring it. But I think you get the picture. It has eight uh, uh, lugs because it's got two poles and four lugs on each pole. Whereas this switch that I've bought you can see it actually has 12 lugs all up. It's got two poles, six lugs on each, and each individual position is an individual throw. So it is a true five throw switch. And this allows me, uh, if I switch out the rotary switch for a two way rotary switch, it allows me to rewire this setup with a slightly different functionality. So honestly, I think there's pros and cons with both ways of doing it but uh, I decided to do it this way to show you another option. So this is the way the guitar is wired right now. I've got my standard three throw, five position strat switch, and I've got a four pole, three throw rotary switch. You can see I'm actually using all four poles of the rotary switch. It is a little bit fiddly to wire, but it's, uh, it's a pretty cheap mod because you really only have to buy the switch. These you can pick up for a couple of bucks if you buy them from overseas or even at retail here in Australia, I can pick them up. Uh, from an electronics shop for under five bucks. So it's a pretty nice cheap mod. This though is how I'm going to rewire the guitar today now that I've got my true five throw strat switch. I'm actually using a six pole double throw rotary switch uh, but I'm only using three poles of the rotary switch. So you could potentially uh, do this with a toggle switch for example and I've also created a diagram for that. I'll put all three of these diagrams in a PDF on my website, so check it out. So this wiring has the same two extra sounds, the two series sounds, but the functionality is a little bit different and, well, slightly simpler sort of functionality, I would think. And wiring itself is a little bit less fiddly to do as well. But um, look, I'll go through the pros and cons of both wirings later in the video. Well, that escalated fairly quickly. <laughs> I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole with my tone control. Uh, the guitar originally had a standard 250k ohm tone pot, but a 47 nanofarad cap. And I really only ever use the tone control with this guitar when I've got these two neck and middle pickups wired in series. And I have it rolled almost all the way off just to give me that almost kind of jazz guitar sort of sound. And uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, my older videos, you'll know that the uh, value of the tone cap doesn't really do much. It's not really consequential until the tone pot's turned almost all the way down. But in that last kind of 10% of the tone control, there's that sort of transition from a resistive load to a capacitive load on the pickups. And it's just trying to find a sweet spot in there for the jazz guitar sort of sound. So I've decided to go with a 100k ohm tone pot and a 33 nanofarad cap. 
Normally a 100k ohm tone pot would roll off a bit of treble even when it's turned all the way up, but I've modded this pot to work as an open tone control or a no load tone pot. So um, that won't really do that. In fact, it'll make the guitar just a hair brighter when it's turned all the way up. And by having a 100k ohm pot, it means that that sweet spot is kind of spread out over more of the, t of the pot's sweep. So it should be a little easier to find. Now, if you're planning to wire this up, there's a couple of considerations. If you're going to try and wire something uh, as complex as this switch with that sort of heavy cloth coated uh, wire that pickups often come with, then uh, forget it. It's, it's just going to be too thick and difficult to do. So um, you notice I use uh, kind of skinny colored hookup wire. I normally just buy this uh, this sort of stuff. They call it ribbon, ribbon cable at my local J car and just peel off the colors as I need them. The other thing to think about if you're planning a mod like this is clearance issues. You can see I've used one of these plastic type rotary switches and uh, I'm actually going to use a, a cage type rotary switch but notice I've put it in the middle between the two pots and that's simply because with either of these switches they're just they're never going to fit in this part of the route. You can of course get rotary switches with smaller form factors. That would be an option if you want to put it down here. Even putting the rotary switch in this position, I had to check and kind of double check that it was actually not going to foul on this part of the route. Uh, it was going to be very close after I measured it all, so uh, when I opened the hole to accept the larger bushing from this switch, instead of just reaming it out, I've actually filed it, but only in this direction, to open it uh, in, in, in this direction, that way the switch can clear this part of the route. The other issue, of course, is depth, and this guitar only has, uh, for most of this route, only has a depth of just a hair more than 20 millimeters, and as you can see, I've actually used a rotary switch that's uh, got PCB pins. In other words, it's designed to be soldered into a printed circuit board. And I've uh, wrapped the wires way down on the lugs and then nipped off all of the tops just to make sure I have clearance. Uh, with this switch, it's gonna be the same issue. It's quite a bit deeper. It's quite a bit bigger than 20 mil. And I could do the same thing, but uh, there's uh, already eyelets here for soldering and it's just gonna be a bit of a pain in the neck. So I think instead what I'm gonna do is actually give this route a bit of a skim, maybe drop it about uh, five mil with my router. Well, it feels too heavy to be basswood, like so many of the Asian-made guitars, and it's there's a bit of grain there. It actually it really looks like alder to me. Again, that seems strange for a budget uh, Asian-made instrument, but. I don't know, tell me what you think. The other interesting thing is just this uh, kind of texture on the sides of the routes. I used to run uh, large uh, wood routing CNC machines in a guitar factory and this has obviously been cut with a serrated cutter of some sort and I have no idea why you would do that. Perhaps, well perhaps it's just more efficient and uh, there's a bit less heat in the cut and they can sort of crank the traverse speeds and knock the bodies out a bit faster. I have no idea. If you do know, let me know in the comments. Now, wiring something like this with lots of switch terminals and skinny little wires is not exactly everyone's idea of a funky good time. So I'll give you a couple of tips. Firstly, even though I'm not following the colors on this diagram exactly, I'm still using different colored wire in my wiring. All of these gray wires are earth, all of this yellow wire is all the same node, it's actually the hot side of the circuit, and so on and so on. And it's amazing the number of circuits I've, guitar circuits I've seen where everything's wired in all of the same wire. And it's just crazy. You, you really can't troubleshoot when, when it looks like that. So do yourself a favor and get some different colored wires. The next thing I'd say is with this skinny wire, what I usually do, I actually tin uh, this wire as I'm using it. It's not strictly necessary. You'll still get a good solder joint not doing that but it does it, I do it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, this wire, the insulation on it, will often actually shrink back slightly the first time you heat it. So by tinning it, you're kind of pre-shrinking that little part of the insulation. The other reason I do it is that it actually helps you thread the wire through these little eyelets like that, and that's already caught on something, but I can just 
move that out of the way again makes it a lot easier to thread and thirdly it means I can bend this over and it'll actually hold its shape and it'll make it a lot easier to solder because the wire is just going to stay on the eyelet. The other thing I'd say about soldering up to these old-fashioned style switches, um, this might be tricky to catch on camera, but these terminals actually have two contacts. They're almost like a little little pair of pliers, and they squeeze, they're spring-loaded, and they, and they kind of squeeze the central sliding contact from both sides. And if you're careless with the iron, the solder can actually flow down the terminal and block that uh, contact or even even if it doesn't block it it can actually limit the way it it sort of springs back and I don't think there's any coming back from that I think even the strongest desoldering pump is not really going to clear that properly and you've basically ruined a very expensive switch so I'll show you the way I solder these I actually twist the wire around the top and then I use this guy which is an aluminium heatsink clip now just get that down low on the terminal, it doesn't have to be both sides, just one side will do. And that'll stop the solder from flowing down and potentially ruin, ruining the contact, but essentially ruining the switch. So I hope you can see how I've done those there. I think that's the safest way to solder these old solder switches. Now, soldering up to pot casings is not strictly necessary. There are other ways to earth your circuit reliably. It's really just done as a convenience, uh, like mounting this capacitor here onto the side um, for point-to-point -point guitar wiring. Maybe I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in another video, but for now I will say that if you're going to try and solder up to pot casings and you don't have an actual solder station, you're almost certainly kidding yourself. To flow this little bit of solder on here, I actually turn my iron all the way up as high as it goes, which is 480C. Uh, it's the only way you can really get the solder to flow properly on a surface like this. I've also tinned these wires, these are all earth wires, and I've got my iron now set on about 450. And I'm just going to hold that in place with some blue tack. I know it seems amateur, but honestly, it's so handy for this sort of fiddly point-to-point -point stuff. Um, and I'm just going to flow a little extra solder. And I've also got my little flat blade screwdriver handy, which I'll use that in a sec. And I'll just press that down into place while that solder cools. So I've got the jack wires hooked up to a test lead in my bench amp, and I've just been through testing all the different settings and uh, the tone pot as well. Everything seems to be working okay, so I'm going to reassemble the guitar and I'll show you how it works. So the Red Casino's all back together again. I should mention that uh, if you are replacing an Asian made strat switch with something like an Oak Grigsby strat switch, you'll also have to order a switch tip because they're different sizes and they're not compatible. I got a black switch tip with mine and that's because I'm actually gathering up some black parts uh, for this guitar. I'm going to mod it so that it's kind of black on red. I think that'll look pretty cool. It's also why I didn't bother putting any shielding in. It certainly needs some shielding tape, um, but uh, I'll do that when I do those other mods. So in this version of the circuit, the uh, mod switch, of course, is just a two-way switch, and I think it's kind of uh, it works a little more intuitively. It only operates in uh, positions when the strat switch is in positions two or position four, when you've got sort of combinations of pickups and it just it's literally just a series parallel switch so um, for example here's the neck and the middle in parallel and there it is in series 
And uh, for what it's worth, I'm really happy with the way my tone pot, my new tone pot works. It seems to roll off the treble quite gradually and kind of evenly through the sweep of the uh, pot. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to hear more about uh, what the heck I was doing with all of those wires on my guitar and what my test rig was and, and the processes I went through to uh, choose those parts for my tone control. So I guess the advantage of this second version is partly a simpler functionality. It is literally just a series parallel switch and it seems a little more intuitive to use, I guess. Um, it is also slightly easier to wire. The, the rotary switch, you're only using three poles of the rotary switch and it only uh, has two throws. And because of that, you also have the option of uh, some other switches. If you're not into rotary switches or you don't have room for one in your build, then you could potentially just use a mini electronics toggle switch. Uh, you could use a Fender S1 switch, uh, which is one of those little push button things that uh, in the top of the pot there. And I guess if you're building something to look real retro, then you could even get a chunky electronics toggle and kind of dress it up by grafting on a plastic switch tip. The downside, of course, is that uh, these Oak Grigsby switches, well, they're not that cheap, and you don't really have the option of a second tone control with this switch because, it's, uh, because you actually wire to both sides of the switch, both poles of the switch. If you really have to do it this way and you also want a second tone pot, you do have an option, and that is to buy a four-pole strat switch. I think they're called a super switch or a super strat switch, something like that, but they do exist. With the first version of the circuit, I guess the main advantage is that it's nice and cheap. You don't have to replace your strat switch. And since you're only wiring to one half of the strat switch or one pole of the strat switch, it leaves the other pole free if you do want to add that second tone control. The flip side though is with that first version, that, that uh, rotary switch is actually pretty, pretty fiddly to wire, I must say. And um, if you're not into rotary switches, then you're kind of out of luck because well, I'd be very surprised if you if anyone makes a toggle switch with four poles and three throws. As I mentioned, I'll uh, put all of those diagrams in a PDF on my website, so do check them out and let me know if you had a go at wiring them with your project guitar as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.